So, as a gamer, and one who regularly seeks out games that are scary, creepy, or overall terrifying, if you were to ask me what games scared me the most this year, well, the answer is The Division. Or to be exact, Tom Clancy's The Division. Yeah, sure, I hear it now. How on earth is a third-person shooter slash RPG terrifying? Well, gameplay-wise, it isn't. While it certainly is terrifying to come across a high-tier boss randomly wandering the streets that you have to abuse the game's shitty pathfinding to defeat, obviously that's not the scary stuff. The Division, while science fiction, is grounded heavily in the real world in terms of its lore. That's where the truly scary shit is. So, what's the story behind The Division? Well, simply put, on Black Friday 2015, a new strain of the smallpox virus emerges in downtown New York City. It quickly spreads, engulfing the city, the state of New Jersey, and much of the East Coast. By Christmas, this new smallpox virus is quickly engulfing the entire country. The President of the United States takes advantage of Article 51 of the Patriot Act to enact martial law across the country and activates a sleeper agency of the Department of Homeland Security known only as The Division. This first wave of agents is sent into New York City, but all communication is cut off by New Year's. You are a member of the division who has just been activated in the second wave. You've just retaken Brooklyn, where your team is sent into the city proper, and that's where the game begins. Big whoop, that's not so scary, I hear you say. Well, hold your horses there, buckaroo. Without spoiling too much of the main storyline of the game, as you piece together the evidence as to how this strain of smallpox was created and spread, a terrifying scenario is played out, and it is one that is not only probable, but is entirely possible. This version of smallpox was dubbed the Green Flu by the media, due to initial reports discovering that the virus had been spread via $100 bills laced with this super bug. These infected bills were then used across New York City on Black Friday, and by entering the capitalist circulation and banking system, they ended up traveling incredibly far, incredibly fast. According to some of the lore found in the various pre-launch ARGs and the companion novel, one of these infected bills was found as far as San Francisco only a few weeks after the initial reports. To put it simply, money moves fast. So how was this super virus made and who made it? Well, turns out the whole virus is a jumble of some of the worst plagues in history, created via the digitized genetic code of the viruses, combined heavily with that of smallpox. See, we've been able to digitize genetic code for the better part of a decade, and in 2012, scientists were able to use digitized DNA to 3D print bacteria. See, 3D printing is nuts. Scientists are using the tech to create food and even organs. So I bet you think that maybe, say, ISIS got their mitts on this tech and made this super virus, right? Wrong. One man, an American citizen no less, made this virus with just his laptop and some top-of-the-line medical equipment and a 3D printer. A domestic terrorist, an environmental one to boot. This was his solution to the world's mounting overpopulation crisis, as he designed the virus to only kill 9 out of every 10 people. Much like the writing of the late Tom Clancy, this game and its scenarios are fucking terrifying. Now, this super virus may not be something that just any Tom, Dick, or Mary off the street could create, mind you. However, there's another part to this game's puzzle. Operation Dark Winter. Operation Dark Winter was the codename for a senior-level bioterrorist attack simulation conducted from June 22nd to June 23rd, 2001. It was designed to carry out a mock version of a covert and widespread smallpox attack on the United States. Dark Winter was focused on evaluating the inadequacies of a national emergency response during the use of a biological weapon against the American populace. The exercise was solely intended to establish preventative measures 
and a response strategy by increasing governmental and public awareness of the magnitude and potential of such a threat posed by biological weapons, in which massive civilian casualties would overwhelm America's emergency response capabilities, the disastrous contingencies that would result in the massive loss of civilian life were used to exploit the weaknesses of the US healthcare infrastructure and its inability to handle such a threat. The contingencies were also meant to address the widespread panic that would emerge and which would result in the mass social breakdown and mob violence. Exploits would also include the many difficulties that the media would face when providing American citizens with the necessary information regarding safety procedures. Okay, to put it mildly, this exercise was a fucking disaster, and the results of the simulation have largely been ignored. This game used that very same data from Dark Winter to justify the collapse of society in only a month and a half. And while players are isolated from the rest of the world, only able to explore the lower southern half of Manhattan Island via in-game radio broadcasts, and other lore found in and out of game, it's pretty clear that the rest of the USA and the world are completely shit out of luck. And that's why this game terrifies me. Because it's so grounded in actual data and real world tech that the possibility of such an event happening are pants full of dookie levels of terror. When this game came out, I had nightmares about the reality of the scenario, and nine months later, I'm still playing the game. The setting is fascinating. The in-game world is covered with the evidence of the ineptitude of the US government to handle such an event. Discarded lab equipment, body bags left in the streets, evidence of mass executions, roving bands of escaped convicts, maniac zealots trying to purge the plague from the lands via pyromania, and debased scumbags who prey on the weak. Not to mention the fact that Turtle Bay is infested with a private army that decided to cut ties with the US government and annex New York for itself. The sheer and utter chaos, hopelessness, and constant visions of tragedy are haunting. Combined with the game's setting during midwinter, and it creates a bleak and debased visage of a city once crawling with life, now reduced to a plague-stricken, burned-out shell of our former self. A reminder of the human condition that, given the opportunity, so-called civilized people can and will eat each other. And that's why The Division is the scariest game of 2016. Godspeed. I'll see you in hell.